come you're late today. I'm not late. I'm just not really early. The rains last night washed away my favorite boots. Excuses, excuses, excuses. <laughs> Good morning, Good morning, sir. Good morning, Arif and Mira. Today's mission is a little bit special, simply because it is actually a continuation about the changing states of matter, which you have done the other day. Huh? The changing states of matter? I thought we were done in providing you with the information, sir. Of course you did, but this time. I want you both to gather information about water cycles. That's your special mission for today. Water cycle? <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a wet day today. Okay, guys. Enough with the talking. There's so much information waiting for you on Earth. Go now. Actually, like to play in the rain, but my parents do not allow me to do so. I can get sick playing in the rain. Do you like to play in the rain, Mira? No. Well, guys, do you know that the water you drink from your glass today may have fallen from the sky as rain just last week? For your information. The water itself has been passed around pretty much as long as the Earth has. Can you believe that? Note this: when the first fish crawled out of the ocean onto land, your glass of water was already part of that ocean. When Brontosaurus walked through the lakes feeding on plants, your glass of water was part of those lakes. When the kings and queens, rulers and emperors, took a drink from their magic wells, your glass of water was part of those wells. Aha! That's right. And you thought your parents were old. This means that the Earth has a limited amount of water. The water keeps going round and round and round and round and, well, you get the idea. This process is called the water cycle. How does water do that? Well, the information that we got earlier shows that water can be changed into three states of matter. That's right, guys. It's solid. Liquid and gas. Melting is a process when solids change into liquid. Boiling is a process when liquids change into gases at their boiling points. Evaporation is a process when liquid changes into gas. At any temperature at the surface of the liquid, condensation is a process when gas changes into liquid. Freezing is a process when liquids change into solids. If you understand that information, you will understand the water cycle easily. The water. Goes through a natural cycle and transforms at each stage.
The water cycle is the movement of water from the surface of the earth into the air and then back to the surface of the earth. The water from oceans, lakes, ponds or rivers will evaporate to form water vapour in the air. You see, it has been heated by the sun to form water vapour. Now, the water vapour that rises into the air will cool down to form into tiny water droplets. These tiny water droplets will combine to form a cloud. Look at the sky. There are so many clouds out there, right? When there are too many water droplets, the cloud becomes heavy. When they become too heavy, they become dark in colour and the water droplets fall down as rain. The rainwater falls onto the ground, flows into the rivers, the ponds, lakes and oceans. That's the way it happens, over and over again. You can see that the clouds move all across the land. The precipitation falls not only in the form of rain, but also in the form of ice or snow. When the rain stops, sometimes we can see a rainbow. Now that's what I like the best. <laughs> the water cycle ensures that the earth has a continuous supply of water. It ensures that the fresh water supply is always adequate. The water cycle also keeps the earth's surface cool. Whew, it's freezing now! We use water to drink, wash and bathe. Water is also used as a raw material in the food industry. Water is also a home to many living things such as crabs, fish, prawns and water weeds. The plants need water to produce and transport minerals. Water is also important to living things. The sources of water that living things always use come from the rivers, wells, springs and lakes. These sources of water must be kept clean. If the water is polluted, the water will be dirty and contain harmful substances. Then, this water that we use can affect our health. There will be no more places for organisms to live in if the water is polluted. They will die. Remember, the water from these sources is important for the survival of all living things.
stop throwing rubbish into the drains and rivers. Treat the sewage from houses, industries and agricultural land. You can smell the fresh air after the rain. The water cycle helps to clean the air and water. It also purifies the water used for our daily activities. Water is an integral part of life on this planet. It is an odourless, tasteless substance that covers more than two-thirds of the Earth's surface. Most of the water on Earth, 97% to be exact, is salt water found in the oceans. We cannot drink salt water nor can we use it for crops because of the salt content. We can remove salt from ocean water but the process is very expensive. Only about 3% of Earth's water is fresh. 2% of the Earth's water is in solid form, found in ice caps and glaciers. Because it is frozen and so far away, the fresh water from these ice caps are not available for use by people or plants. That leaves only 1% of all the Earth's water that is available for humans and land animals to use. This fresh water is found in lakes, rivers, streams, ponds and in the ground. Do you know that a small amount of water is found as vapour in the atmosphere? We know about that! <laughs> wow! That is a lot of information from you guys. I am so proud of you both. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. But can you go home now? The cool and rainy weather makes me hungry. Okay, okay. Let's go home. Thanks, sir. Uh.